All right. Hey, everyone. It's another episode of the New Stack Makers, and it's Adidas time. We are lucky to have two people from the Adidas technology team who are going to talk to us about scaling DevOps and resiliency on Kubernetes. We have Inyaki Alzariz, Senior Director, Platform Engineer at Adidas, and Roscoe Vukoshanovic. Director of Solutions Architecture at Adidas. Thank you so much for have. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, Alec. Thank you for having us. Actually, <laughs> thank you for having us. Uh, hello. So we're going to break this this story down into three parts. We're going to look mm -hmm. at the cultural aspects of how you manage to scale. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at. We're actually first. We're going to start with the technical aspects. Mm -hmm. We're going to then look at the cultural aspects, and then we're going to see how those things combine together for the strategic asset aspects of how Adidas is scaling. Mm. Now, Adidas is on its way, isn't it? Already, I mean, you've been you've been scaling out your architecture. You're running seven times as many pods as you had two years ago when you did the mm -hmm. CNCF use case. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, sure. As as you said, okay. I think two, two years ago it was when you had a, the, the first the first case and we were running already we were very proud to be running already four four thousand posts I remember in our then young um, Kubernetes based infrastructure but now there's definitely seven times that okay we are in the, in the more than twenty four thousand posts okay we are building code more than ten thousand times a day so definitely I mean we are we are on the journey okay we are definitely we we still got. You know things to do definitely a lot to do okay and, and, and we have far far away to get but at least we are on the journey that i think is the important part hmm. uh, roscoe would you say any, what what's it what's it been like over those past two years before we get into the breakdown on the topic i mean what hmm. do you have any kind of quantification that you can provide on how much the architecture has uh changed well, it's it's grow, growth is exponential, right? Like we started with uh, just a couple of microservices on the uh, uh, dot com side, then where I was, and we started with the with the core started like rolling out these digital products to to different markets. So we have like significant amount of markets across Adidas and Reebok, like totaling in over sixty like different markets. So we would go with one digital product there and then roll it out to different places, and it took like a couple of years. To roll it out and and along with that we we exponentially grew in in everything so like architecture wise we added new services we added new uh, of, of course like teams grew a lot teams grew significantly so we had to re-team and 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 like restructure a lot but also like um, usage of our platforms grew and we had to together reinvent ourselves a couple of times along this journey i think and it's all about that i think how did we like manage this growth basically and, and how we did it and, and this is like what we will talk about i guess like when we talk about these three pillars that's the right. main topic how did the digital journey and requirements of it built all of this right? yeah right so you've achieved the scale so tell me about the technical enablers for example mm. you know api management observability scaling mm. services how have services mm. evolved at Adidas and what enabling function uh, do mm. they play in your overall development? Yeah, sure. So, but I, and I think this is also something that we see incipient then, okay? We were, when we were thinking, how do we scale next, okay? Because we were growing a lot, okay? And, and focusing, we wanted the, the product teams to focus on, on bringing business value, okay? That, that was clear. We wanted to reduce the cognitive load and make sure that the, the adoption of cloud native DevOps, okay, and, or the adoption at that moment of Kubernetes was not a problem. So, what we realized is that we needed to to provide everything they needed in an easy way to to avoid them from focusing on that, and that took the form of a set of digital platforms, okay. That the only focus was actually that abstracting the team from the complexity of running, for example, a Kubernetes cluster a CICD tool chain, okay, or monitoring a stack or, or a streaming platform. And those platforms will be easy to consume on a very self-service way, okay, very focused on engineers and, and thinking always on the engineers at the core of our, of, of our plans. It's bringing the same consumer obsession that I would say that a company organization has over our final consumer 
uh, trying to understand it and react, the same should be ingrained in these platform products, making sure that we understand our consumer. This is our application teams and make sure that we can evolve and react to their needs in, in regards of scalability, easy to use, new features, resilience, etc. And also that was not enough. We needed to, to complement this a little bit, especially maybe they were the early adopters, okay, they, they were the, the ones jumping in, okay, and, and helping us build this and discover the platform, but the teams that were coming behind, okay, or that needed when we wanted to scale, they needed some easy way to start with them. So that's why we also created a set of what we will call application building blocks or quick starters that actually will help them to develop initially a first microservice, you know, based on our on our on our standard stack, deploying Kubernetes easily without a standard pipeline. So maybe it's not the setup that you will have you know, a few months down the line when you go to production, but it's immediately allowing you to start building on top of the platforms and growing your confidence with them. And also another critical uh, element that I would say that we added was we knew that there were applications that will have an, an easy move, okay, or an easier move, maybe more the couple of the old systems, but we had a lot of systems that had a lot of gravity to on-prem, all on-prem systems that we are still on the on the on the road of transforming and, and evolving and a lot of data hosted there so we also needed to provide if we wanted to to the part that we were modern um, changing and modernizing to to a kubernetes infrastructure for example we knew that we needed to make some self-service connectivity that would allow them to still connect to the old systems and allow this 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 connectivity okay so i would say these are part of those of those uh, technical enablers that we have. Yeah, that self-service connectivity to the old legacy architectures is really important. I mean, you, they're mm. still using three-tier architectures, aren't they? And, and mm. microservices are entirely mm. different, but you need those connector points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what other technical enablers are playing a role in, you know, in how to manage at scale? Roscoe, do you have any thoughts mm. on that? Well, I would say that, yeah, sorry. Uh, I I would say that it's not new technical enablers, it's evolution of the technical enablers, enablers that we have, right? Uh, we had a constant, like as, as Iñaki said, we had a constant contact or like the open channel to work together with our like um, foundational systems, fun, foundational uh, um teams like, like Iñakis, and we continuously evolved according to the, the new needs of the digital products, like grew in the consumer base and like we grew significantly. And then we had like the, the growth that we needed in that scale and growth in complexity and all of that. So we, over time, we, we more or less replaced like a, few significantly important platforms like the API gateway or the API platform and then CACD internally, what we call Jenkins as a service grew into something completely different and, and like bigger than we have it. And then like we changed our container reg registry, for example. And uh, there is of course the story of our monitoring system. That's like really, um, really big one and it tells a story about our also like digital development where we started with uh, just scattered uh, uh, prometheus instances and uh, uh, elk stacks that were handling handling logs and, and metrics and then ended up in in one like uh, uh, as number of, of clusters grew we we had to scale up but also like make observability a lot easier so we moved into a little more uh, uh, merged space where we um, created this like uh, architecture of the metrics collection based on the, you know, Prometheus Federation and everything. And then like, um, and we ended up now in the last year or so having this completely new internally designed holistic monitoring system that we call Holmes that actually has the uh, streaming system and has the uh, top notch, the, the um, 
retention um, mechanisms in it. So we can basically pair namespace and uh, uh, a pair cluster or even pair application in different ways, tweak the, the retention of logs and metrics and weights collected and weight flows. And it not just it doesn't give us just that, it gives us also like the single point from which we can draw all of our observability. And we even started not just pushing technical metrics to it from like Kubernetes and all of our other technical systems like in platforms, we also push the, some of our business metrics there so we can have the one point where we can, you know, like query it and, and create our, you know, like the, the, the different visualizations or, or different alerting systems and, and things like that. So, so basically this, I, I think the evolution one if you want yeah. and the um yeah uh, and uh, also uh, on this side uh, what's important is that we as we grew from from this like to, to the new number of clusters to this like 37 clusters we didn't just grow in the row um like uh, compute power or number of clusters, we grew in like new solutions on the platform side. And, and we did all of that together. We found out the way to use our most complex system, which was like .com at that time as sort of uh, R&D playground. So we did lots of POCs together to try and, and fit it to the purpose to our most complex case. So we can easily scale it then across Adidas. So I think that innovation that we were driving through that was also like a, like a big enabler here, because we we got where we are with this um, with this like really open approach to innovation in the platform mm -hmm. sense. So that really is a lot of work there. I mean, that is a lot of technical work that you've been doing. I mean, you've talked about uh, you know your API gateway, your the Jenkins as a service the changing of the container registry, you know, your monitoring system is being developed, you're capturing Prometheus. I mean, you're doing a lot. So my question then is moving on to the cultural aspects of this work. Yeah, I know that mentorship and training are important at Adidas. And I, I imagine it has to be considering what I've just heard, but how has that practice evolved? And how does it intersect with the technical aspects of an at scale development, deployment, and management environment? Mm. How about how about yeah. who wants to take that? Mm. It, it's, Go, Roscoe. it's me. I'm, 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 yeah. So so the uh, we basically like had like the same way that products have grew. Like on the digital side, we had a like a huge growth on engineering side. And, and like it, it goes like to the engineering journey, how we are handling it. So we have like quite a robust onboarding. Basically we go into, uh, we went first into having like really high quality multi-day onboardings on site in Saragossa where our first big uh, technical hub was where Inaki is located as well. And, and there was like a week for people to spend time together and learn and have a multiple, you know, like presentations and introductions to other the stack stacks and stuff as they are joining. Now we moved into more scalable way because of lots of people joining, but, but of course, because of the pandemic times as well, we have now Udemy courses and we have like also like multiple weeks of onboarding in the different ways. So people can also like feel how teams are breathing, create some, uh, create some networking, you know, like as they start in the company, understand, you know, who's who and what is what of the company. And then as they land, we immediately start with these kind of training plans on observations and developing people and, and thinking about like these individual development plans and going into the, you know, more higher quality mentorship. And for like mentorship purposes, we have these, among other things, of course, there are like different kinds of, uh, of it. And there's like also IT learning department that's helping with this. We have aspiring initiatives, which are like aspiring architects and aspiring engineers initiatives that actually um, are um, mentoring initiatives that are pairing mentors and mentees with a certain goals of, of developing skill. 
And then at the end, well, not at the end with uh, like working for Adidas, but as a final thing, we have this what's called a stair stepping. And it's like a, a, a good, good, well structured plan towards like a good skill development, but also potential and performance evaluation for the reaching the next step in your career in Adidas. So we have like sort of the, the whole kind of a, a cycle uh, developed so people can continuously have feedback, continuously develop from the, the minute they step into our teams and then get to that, those next steps in their career so they can manage their careers in Adidas as well. So how, how about the community? How do you engage them? How do you get them uh, behind this? Mm. That's, that's definitely an important topic for us from, from the beginning. We were lucky that that from the from the start, okay, when we started bringing engineering capabilities inside the company six years ago, immediately we got, I would say, ingraining the in the collaboration spirit of the organization. That's something that it's it's part of, of, of the Adidas culture DNA, and immediately we saw it grow on the on the on that incipient first group of engineers. Okay, how they would share with each other and how, you know, things are starting actually where they are part of this, this journey. Okay. What we were able to scale is because one were learning from the others. That's, that's the, the clear, the clear part. And if it was important, then it has been more important as we grew. Okay. We passed from, from that incipient, uh, engineering community to one that this year will reach a, a two to a thousand internal engineers. So having all that talent and not using that, that would be, that would be, that would be a waste, okay? So that's why we invested a lot in making sure that we keep that having, I would say that we have community of practices in all in all forms, okay? We gave it a name, it's our Adidas code hashtag, okay? And we have definitely team channel where you obviously can immediately ask any questions. Somebody will re immediately reach out to you, help you. We have bi-weekly sessions, okay? Where all the engineering communities is invited. Everyone can submit a proposal, something that they wanna share. And, and that way we can, one, show what others are doing and immediately be a reference. And so you know who to reach out if you're trying something new or you are inspired by them, okay? And you want to bring it to your to your, um, to your your domain. The same, we have um, annual tech summit, okay, where we all get together and we take this to the next level, okay, with a couple of days or, or regular sessions. We also are very big in, in open source, and sadly, we cannot open source every, everything outside. Okay, that's that's clear. There's a lot of things that that have know how of the company, or or definitely that you know that they are tied to how we do things, and that's why we have an inner source portal. Okay, where every engineering team can immediately put a configuration file in the repo, and immediately will appear there. Okay, so everybody can reuse it. Okay, find what are the you know, the libraries or the enablers that they have for different from, from different aspects, and they can also contribute to those. Okay, for us, that's important to use that engineering talent that we have and make sure that we we share around. And gamification for us has always been a, a big thing. Um, we are a sports company, so healthy competition, it's always brought the, the best of us, I would say. And that's why, for example, um, a couple of years back, we were having this DevOps cap where we were trying to get the people really interested in actually scaling the box, okay, on on being interested. And for me, the challenge was that they had to bring their business counterpart and tie this this evolution in the box, okay, on maturing into, into not only the technical side, but already bringing business, saying, okay, this is bringing this value because we are reducing uh, or incidents or because we are deploying faster, because you get, you know, sooner, you know, sooner time to market or not the new features. And that definitely, Help a lot, okay, on, on the adoption, and that's one of the key elements that we are here. And even out of that, we had the one of the byproducts was this the post maturity framework that we have, okay, starting there. So a kind of map, what could be the capabilities that you would embrace, and what means to be in the crawl, to the walk, to the run, to the fly, even state, and to inspire the teams. And that's something that not only had the space in that the box cap, actually, it's something that was taken by the by the digital organization. For, for the whole tech community as a, as a guide and something that we keep evolving and we keep adding new capabilities. This last year, uh, year and a half, it's been a lot of focus on resilience and, and, and onboarding as a repractice and a lot of things have permeated into the DevOps maturity framework. Okay, This is, for me, the example of how this community is helping to scale because one learn from the others and inspire to others. Okay, And, uh, and I think this is another of the big parts of this this success on how to scale okay and how to make sure that your people it 
it's it's uh, it's adopting and ready and and continuous learning for me that's that's the, the the part that is behind this yeah that continuous learning is so important mm -hmm. so how do you find the technical and cultural dimensions affecting the strategic direction mm -hmm. for adidas as we move into the last part of our discussion yeah definitely i can i can i can start and maybe I think it's clear that it's affecting this. We have obviously a, a clear effect on our on our tech strategy. That that's the first one that was impacted. I would say, okay, or the first one that is obviously impacted. Saying, okay, how do you drive this change? And you make some architectural strategy decisions. Saying, okay, how are we going to drive? What are what? Are, how are we going to drive the the changes on the on, on our systems? Okay, how we are going to build them? How do we are going to create the new ones and and base them in what we could call the pillars of cloud native. Okay, it might be API first. That's that's one of the first decisions that we made. Okay, let's let's create these API products. Okay, let's start thinking out. Yes, there's consumer experiences products, but there's an underlying things that happen on the on the background that we need to to make sure that we productify because in the end those are okay products about our product information, about our inventory information that it can be immediately reused across the whole organization. So it was clear that they had to be easy to consume and to provide the services to the to, to, to all the other experiences. Very in, in line with the service-based architecture, okay? Definitely we all, I think my, um, microservices, it's, it's been here, okay? But also how you look at those systems, okay? And how do you start looking at your, at your digital products? The adoption of DevOps, that's, that was a technical, uh, it's cultural at the same time, but obviously there's a, a part of this technical, okay, how do we adopt this, how we are going to make sure, how do we enable people to really adopt all those best practices that we knew that the, that the key actors of the, of the market, okay, we could see the DevOps uh, state report, okay, where it actually shows how these capabilities or these practices are, we're doing, you, we're being adopted for those top performance and we wanted to, to make sure that we were there. And for me, one of the important ones was that container first. Uh, everything should be containerized. One, it was, uh, uh, for me, uh, as a developer, was liberating, okay, to some extent, to be able to provide environments on the fly for every single feature, be finally able to to adopt all those, maybe all the other pillars, okay, easy to create new, new microservices, okay, deploy, test, and reproduce through the environment. But for me, it's also a very conscious decision on the on the technical side that is also giving you, if not definitely, um, let's say cloud vendor independence. That's that I think is very difficult to achieve, if possible. But it's giving you enough flexibility and portability. Initially, even from our on-prem infrastructure to the cloud, because let's remember that we have the same platforms that we offer on, on our on our public cloud we also offer as a platform as a service on our on-prem so that's the first step and even in the if at some point you need to make a change that you want to drive and open new new providers you it's obviously it's not painless you still have to to invest but it's doable at least it simplifies the process of we can migrate and move to somewhere else if needed hmm? But that's the technical side. For me, the most important, and I think the 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 way that you see that that tech and and the way that we can provide value through those digital products, not the, the platform in the end, they are, they are the bottom line, they are the engine. The ones that are providing the value are those product teams, okay, that are creating the the those digital products. Is to see how Adidas during the the last six years have put tech as one of the core capabilities okay and one um and one of the the and it's been investing heavily in in sourcing and, and gaining and retaining the the internal knowledge and, on on tech and i would say this growth is what is obviously um put the strategy to grow this capability to put the push on integrating i would say business and it that i would say that it's you can see it very clear how it crystallized in the new global strategy, where actually digital is at the core of the company strategy. It's like the it's it's set as the strategic partner for business. So together, you know, integrating business and tech, we can reach our business targets. Okay. And that the clear strategy is to own the game and owning the game is owning tech. Okay. And and I guess that's that's very clear how all this even went all the way to the company strategy. Or because the company strategy took it went all the way. I think it's a, it's a, it's a circular relationship. So maybe in a last question, 
you know, mm. we can talk about a little bit, uh, Roscoe, about how does this all affect your cloud strategy? How does it affect how IT and business teams work together? What are some of the ways that you're seeing it? Yeah, so this was all like a part of a DevOps journey, I think. For me, it was a big thing that the company's decision was in digital to go for this, like what we call pro call product led organization, which means that we integrated tech and business to drive like end to end accountability for our uh, digital products. And this will put the, the, the tech and business together in this like product team and product leadership teams. And, and with that, we, we were, you know, pushed towards finding the common language and mostly like the DevOps and stability area, talking about the, talking about the stability and error budgets. And like we introduced new SRE measurements that are important for us. For example, we measure the error budgets, but more important measurement for us is a revenue leak because you have like different ways and, and time downtime in your services or errors in your services do not always mean the same thing. So we, we found these like intersections, like in way we talk and way we look at the digital products. And also we applied things like a flow framework to, to have business completely aware of the way that like a defects and technical depth and things like that are affecting the workflow. So we basically unified lots of things, including the backlogs. So as we adopted the DevOps and then going into the next steps of maturity with the SRE and, and globally going with the SRE concepts, we went into we, we went into like having unified backlogs for digital products and also like SRE uh, uh, specific things and features and and also like the, this whole organization change led into having these meetings together at the highest levels as well when the decisions have been made with VPs from both tech and, and digital business and, and having all of the decisions made together. So it's kind of like our, our business and tech are highly integrated in this uh, in this way of working, right? And and you know, going forward, this like matures to the level that our product owners and people that are driving the, the global consumer facing features are already um, able to talk really well with like uh, uh, tech people on the level of like, for example, me as an architect. And all we are already talking about the, how does it fit in like application space and things like that, because like we are working so close together in there in the domain. And of course, like going forward, we're also together looking at scaling because the scale that we are planning for is always like multidimensional. When we say scale, we're not thinking only about how do we scale on the on the hardware or like infrastructure perspective. We're also thinking about the complexity, about the uh, about the ways to approach like certain new events or the certain new features that we want to build. So like this future looking mindset that we now uh, uh, adopted in Adidas and it's it's uh, having us planned for like uh, next big event or next Black Friday or next big sale or, or like next big feature going out is all driven by um, tech and product or business together. So this is like, the, I think that one of the major things that came out of, of us maturing uh, as the organization. And I think that the our DevOps journey has a lot to do with it because we understood the um, how it's all, how does it all fit together? You know, like a basically software development life cycle and the product development, how, how they need to work together to, to, you know, just push the digital forward and, and grow as a digital organization, not just as a tech organization or as the business organization, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. This is a great way to, to wrap things up. I want to thank you both uh, for your time. And Inyaki, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Inyaki Alzariz, Senior Director mm -hmm. of Platform Engineering at Adidas. And Roscoe, thank you so much, Roscoe. Roscoe Vukashinovich, Thank you. Director of Solutions Architecture. Yes. Thanks so much.